ब्रह्मा गुरुर् विष्णु गुरु देव महेश्वर गुरुरेव परम ब्रह्मा तस्मा श्री गुरवे नम चिन्मय ज्ञातियोक्यम सचराचर पदम दर्शित माता पिता बंधुष्ट सखा सहना सहना भुनाथु सह वीरियम खरवाहाय हे जस्वीनाधीतमस्तु मिदिशावहाय ओ शांति 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 So we are continuing our journey through the seventh chapter. And Mark, what verse are we on now? We're starting on one forty-nine tonight. One forty-nine. Can you help us out, please, Ganesh? Manaso. निग्रहीतस्ये a man who has conquered his mind is satisfied with even a little enjoyment of pleasure. He knows well that pleasures are impermanent and are followed by grief. To him, even a little pleasure is more than enough. So the thing to understand, it used to confuse me when I would see Swamiji enjoying things in the world. He enjoyed South Indian food. He enjoyed spicy food. Uh, he enjoyed hearing music. He enjoyed chocolate. He enjoyed riding in fast cars. And my idea was, you know, I don't understand this. I suppose, thought there's not supposed to be any, any enjoyment of the world anymore. And what I came to see is it's preference versus insistence. The preferences of the mind can be there. And listen, very carefully, in the end, even desire is not an impediment to realization. What is the impediment to realization? Avidya, uh, ignorance. What is the essence of our ignorance? Vasana. The first power of a vasana is it robs me of self-experience. 
So you know if a particular proclivity is robbing you of self-experience or not. But we are not to fool ourselves. If the mind is extroverted into the world and you are a real desire of desires, then you have more work to do. What is the work we are to do? Understand that there is, there is no such thing as worldly pleasure. The only pleasure there is, is the mind coming home to the self. I either do it in a mediated fashion with an object, a medium, or I let go of the world and I'm content for the mind to abide in the self. Now, one of the imports of this verse is it does us no good to try to measure the mind states of other people. So-and-so must not be realized. Or so-and-so is fully, completely realized. As if we in our stupidity can figure that out. And whether or not the person is enjoying is not necessarily a test. The scriptures say only one person of knowledge can recognize another. With that shunya facade, vast endless So these teachings are for ourselves. So part of what Vidyaranya is saying here is don't get too worked up if you find that, oh, you still like going to the movies or you enjoy the company of your friends. It's okay. The main thing we want to give up is struggle. But you know when that veiling power has covered the mind and you feel like a person, and then ego's resolution is serious business. And there's that kartavya, that obligatory action. Then we have toughest to do. Any thoughts on this? Next verse. Bardha Mukto Mahi Palo Grama Matrena Tushyati Parena Badhana Kranto Narashtram Bahumanyate A king who has been freed from prison is content with sovereignty over a village, whereas when he had neither been imprisoned nor conquered, he did not attach much value even to a kingdom. So, here the idea is, if you felt imprisonment, even a little bit of freedom or dominion is a value. For the man of knowledge who has given up the world, his needs are minimal clothing and shelter. Again, you don't get a gold star for living in poverty. You're proud of it. It'll take you where you're supposed to be. Don't worry about the world. No big deal. But the mark of the man or woman of realization is this kartavya, 
this obligatory action, obligatory action, this jonesing after stuff. That is gone. That is gone. And even if something arises, uh, I think it's the poet Hafiz has the image. It's like a dust devil in, in the desert. It just whirls for a little bit and then disperses. Nothing really above the matter. Next verse. Viveke Jagrati Sati Dosha Darshana Lakshane Kathama Kathama Abha Kathama Abha Karma Pi Bhogecham Jana Ishyati Doubt and discrimination is ever awake regarding the defects of the objects of enjoyment. How can the desire for enjoyment be forced upon him by his fructifying karma? Yes. So, if he's truly a man of realization or a woman of realization, how can these preferences be forced upon him by his prarabdha? Very interesting question. And of course, where we tend to have problems is when we're judging other people. Those of us who may have read the book, I Am That, there were students, devotees in the Sargadatta Maharaj who were all upset because he continued to smoke cigarettes. Well, if you realize, why are you still smoking? So let's see what Vidyaranya answers to this. Going on. Naisha do show yato neka pidham praradhami kshate ichani chapare chacha praradham trividham smritam. Reply There is no incons inconsistency here for the fructifying karma expends itself in various ways. There are three kinds of fructifying karma producing enjoyment with desire. In the producing enjoyment with desire, in the absence of desire and through the desire of another. So the fructifying karmas can either impel me into the desiring of an object, impel me into not desiring something else, or I am then impelled into activity because of the desires of others. But the point to be aware of is don't give a lot of import or credence into what the body-mind intellect does. It will fulfill its part in the Lord's Leela, the Lord's play. You may have a starring role but most of us have a bit part. At best, to walk on. The yogi has given up any concern. Why should he be all? working very hard to remove desires at some point. Peace comes when we give up the struggle. So each man works this out for himself, each person. Each person works this out for themselves. But again, the mark of the person of steady wisdom is sthita pragna, 
the uninterrupted effortless awareness that I am Brahma. That's the mark of the man of steady wisdom, wisdom or the woman of steady wisdom. Next verse. Apatya seva nishchora raja dararata api Jananta eva svanartham ichantyarabdha karmataha The sick attached to harmful food, the thieves and those who have illicit relationships with the wives of a king know well the consequence likely to follow their actions. But in spite of this, they are driven to do them by their fructifying karma. Yes. So, uh, People who have certain impulses, even though they know they're going to get the results of those karmas, they do it anyway. Listen carefully. The dharma of the body is karma. Self-realization does not Free the body from the fruits of the past actions. But the self has no karma. And this is not just the experience of desire. This can also be, for example, if you're afflicted by chronic health issues. Fructifying karma, not out of it. Do what you can to alleviate it, but sometimes you can. I mean, I think of Swamiji, an insulin-dependent diabetic and terrible cardiovascular condition had at least one quintuple bypass and and I think he may have had one or two more and died on the operating table after another heart attack. It's just caught on them. But the person of steady wisdom can go through the joys and the challenges of life with Sthita Radha, steady wisdom. Next verse. Nachautra, Nachautra ta dvaraitum ishvarena pishakyate even Ishvara cannot stop such desires. So Sri Krishna said to Arjuna in the Gita. And there's yeah. a, I think the subsequent verse has the quote. Go ahead. Did you do the subsequent verse? Sadrisham cheshtate svasya prakrte nyanavanapi even, yeah. even wise men follow the dictates of their own nature. Beings are prompted by their own innate tendencies. What can restriction do? Yes. Everybody is impelled helplessly into action because of the force of prakriti, because of the force of the past maturing. What can restraint do? Now, in God's hands, what may have seemed to be a defect can be useful to the Lord. So I think of Swamiji. Swamiji was quite interested in power. 
many people used to say that if he hadn't become a Swami, he probably would have been Prime Minister of India. But what he, did he do with that proclivity? He set as a goal, he used to say, India is now free, now we must free Indians. He wanted to bring Hindu culture back to the Hindus. And he worked tirelessly to do this. Was he successful or not? Who's to say? Other people may have a great desire for scholarship. So what do they do? They study the various scriptures. Swami Tejo Mayananda, pretty clear he always wanted to be a singer. One of the things that changed in his later life when he would do uh, lectures and things. He always brought out his harmonium and he would always sing. But it was always about the knowledge, always about the Lord. So everything can become useful. Act, O Arjuna. According to your swadharma in the yajna spirit, spirit of sacrifice, spirit of selfless service, renouncing our attachment to the fruits of action and our identification with the sense of agency. That's what we do. And the product will work itself Next verse. Avashyam bhavi bhavanam pratikaro bhaved yadi tada dukhairna lipyerna alarama yudhishthiraha. If it were possible to avert the consequences of fructifying karma, nala. Rama and Yudhishthira would not have suffered the miseries to which they were subjected. So these are uh, people in our Hindu uh, mythologies, our itihasas, the stories that even avatars and people in the Mahabharata, noble souls, Cannot escape the foot defying karma, the prod of the karma. Now, going causation hunting is pointless. When it comes to what's happening in my life, frequently, why is not a particularly useful subject unless I'm doing something that's contrary to intelligent living. But let's say um, you break a leg. Oh, am I being punished for this? Is this some karma from a previous life? That kind of pursuit is not, not useful. When negative things happen to us. So in the Adhikari section, the Vibhikachu Dhamani, one of the qualities that we're invited to look at is Pitiksha. Who remembers what Pitiksha is? Forbearance. Forbearance. 
the capacity to endure the pinpricks, the injustices of life without the need for redress or revenge. And what that shows us is we have a point of power when these challenging experiences come to us. If we respond with redress or revenge, we only keep the negative karmic cycle going. So this is the whole thing behind Jesus' teaching of Turn the other cheek. Walk the extra mile. Someone takes your coat, give them your cloak. Because it's rooted in our deep understanding of karma. We do not get what we want. Listen very carefully. We do not get what we need. We get the inevitable fruits of our past actions as it interacts with the karmic environment that we're in. What do I mean by that? So uh, for many of us, our stock portfolio went down last week. Maybe the fruit of what stocks I may have purchased but inflation went up and the whole market went down. See, that's the, the karmic environment in which we live. Those of you who drive cars, anybody bought ca uh, uh, gas in the past day or two? Has gas, have gas prices gone up? I'm thinking with all that's happening in the Middle East, I wouldn't be surprised if gas prices went up. Just the inevitable force of our own past as it interacts with the karmic environment. But understand, for the man or woman or not, We live outside of conducive and non-conducive experiences. Our serenity, our well-being, happiness is not dependent on externals. That's the point. All right, any thoughts on this? Now, at a very basic level of karma, a yogi starts to live a life of integrity. Don't be a jerk because it smooths out karmic repercussions. If you're kind and generous and open-hearted and honest to pay your dues in life goes a long way to smoothing out the ripples of life. But that's just intelligence at the level of Yavahara, the level of transactions. You know, get freedom from that. But it will make the transactions of life a lot easier. Next verse. Nateshvaratvamishasya Ishwara himself ordains that the fructifying karma should be inexorable. 
So the fact that he's unable to prevent such karma from fructifying is not inconsistent with his omnipotence. So the idea here is God doesn't disobey his own rules. God has said light travels at 186,000 miles per second. No matter if someone's good or bad, light still travels in that way. God himself, at least in this universe, doesn't change those laws. One of the metaphysical laws in God's universe is the energy that we put out eventually comes back at the level of the body. The self has no God. I like to use this idea. From the viewpoint of the waker, which is more real, the pleasant dream or the nightmare? Both are unreal. So the man of wisdom, wisdom sees this world like a dream. Next verse. Prashno tarabhyam e vaitag gamyate arjuna krishna yoh anicha purva kanchasti Listen to the questions and answers between Arjuna and Sri Krishna from which we know that a man has to experience his fructifying karma though he may have no desire to experience it. Yes. So you may not like what the Lord delivers to you. Tough. And that's especially true for a lot of us when it comes to things like a health challenge or perhaps the loss of a fortune or the death of a loved one. So we have to practice accepting Life on life's terms. Now, the force of karma can be blunted through prayer by changing our thought, by changing our sankalpa. We can, to some degree, blunt the force of karma. David, I love that image that you shared with me years ago. So correct me if I get it wrong. Some of our karmas are like writing in sand. You can just smooth them over. Some of them are uh, carved in, in wood. and You have, can get some sandpaper out. You can get rid of them. But some are etched in stone. And all we can do is accept them. Did I get it right? You got it right, Jim. Pardon me? You got it right. Okay. So those are the kinds of karmas that we have. Some we just have to accept. Some we can do something about. But the way to be free from the force of prarabdha is get out. Stay with the meditation, the sangoham, a sangoham, a sangoham, puna punaha, unattached. 
unattached, unattached alone. Next verse. Atakena prayuptoyam papam charati puruha anechan napi varneya paladivani yojita. O Krishna, prompted by what does a man sin against his will, as if some force compels him to do so? Yes. I'm not going to do X, Y, and Z, and then I find myself doing it. So even in the West, we have this idea. I love the saying that St. Paul writes in his letter to the Romans. I do not do that which I would do, and I do that which I hate. Therefore, it is not I that do it, but sin that is lodged in my limbs. That's his word for what we would call vasana. So let's see what the answer is that Krishna gives to Arjuna that I think Vidyaranya is going to quote. Kama esha krodha esha tajo guna samudhava maha shano maha paapman vidhyen miha vaira vidhyen miha vairanim it is desire and its and its brood it, it is desire and its brood anger born of the quality of rajas it is insatiable the great source of all sins know it to be your enemy yes so krishna's response is why do i do that which i hate it is because of kama craving the rajasic mind. What is the cause of my craving? Vasana. But it can be overcome. And this isn't Vidyaranya, this is Jim, but I think it's truth. We are not healed so much by what we turn from as by what we turn to. Well, yes, it is. It is Krishna. Because Krishna says, he who gives up the objects of desire but allows the desire to remain behind is verily a hypocrite. And in the end, that white knuckling kind of, of uh, uh, resistance will fall because it's rooted in ego. And ego is just not powerful. But then Krishna says, but his desire leaves him upon seeing the Supreme. So the way to heal those compulsions Drown the mind in Brahma. Soak the mind in the roar of all. Turn the mind towards God as much as you can. And then the world will leave you. Are there any thoughts on this? And frankly, if we have a bad habit, pop of a sin, and we see how it's hurting the people around us, that also can impel us. I was listening to someone at an AA meeting 
and they were talking about the shame of like their six-year-old child who said, I don't like drunk mom. At six, they were able to see the difference. That's one of the things that impelled this mother to quit drinking. Next verse. Jim, why does Bhagavan say it is desire? It's it's only he only talks about rajas as causing causing our sins. Why is that? Well, because that's what gets us in trouble, is my the addictive tendency of the mind, which is rajas, and the cause of the rajas is the vasana. How did the vasana get there? From indiscriminate revelry with the objects of the senses. Over and over again for lifetimes. I don't know, did that answer your question? So in other words, what you're saying is, let's say someone is um, experiencing tamas, eventually what will happen is they'll swing over to Rajas and that's when they they uh, they cause harm to themselves or someone else? Well, Thomas is essentially temporary. For most people who's, who, who seek Thomas, it is an, an attempt to escape the pain of Rajas. I can't stand my boss. My wife is mad at me. So I think the solution is to go get loaded. But it wears off. Don't bother me. My life's a wreck. I'm going to go to bed. But you wake up, and then the rajas comes back. The tamas is a temporary respite, and it never solves the problem. Did that make sense? Yeah. You know, we, we have a slogan around AA. We say the alcohol wasn't my problem. The alcohol was my solution. My problem is I was restless, irritable, and discontent. And that was too painful. That's why I needed to drink or get loaded. And we have a, a condition that we talk about in the 12-step tradition called white knuckling it. And that's when you just decide to quit drinking. And that restless, irritable, and discontent mind is still there. And that's called being dry or white knuckling it. And after a while, your friends say, for God's sake, take a drink. You know, you're miserable and you're making the rest of us miserable. But if you engage in a spiritual practice, which is what the 12 steps are really about, then the desire to use, the desire to drink is really And that's the truth about everything in this world. We have to solve the underlying issue of the divine discontent. Remember, if I'm stuck wanting, if I'm irritable and restless and discontent, it's a spiritual hangover. I'm experiencing the inevitable results of yesterday's or last year's or last lifetime's indulgence. And just like if you've got a hangover, in the end, 
a Bloody Mary is not a particularly good solution. It's only going to perpetuate the problem. That's why going towards Thomas doesn't work. All right, any other questions on this? Next verse. Svabhava jena kaunteya nibadhasvena karmanam kartum ne chasiyan yan mohat karishyas kyabasho pitat O oh, Arjuna, your own karma produced by your own nature compels you to do things even though you may not want to do them. Yes. So my own karma, the force of my own past, compels me, impels me into doing it. And it can be something like, oh, I want to leave the world, become a sannyasi, mm -hmm. I really, really, really want to do this, but I'm super horny. Can't help myself. Going to get a girlfriend, going to get a boyfriend, going to get married. And then wife wants children. What to do? Now all of a sudden you're a grahasta householder. Can't leave now. I've got responsibilities. I've got duties. Someone's getting very deep in their practice. But a business opportunity comes along. I just can't. Pass it up. Off we go. But can we strengthen? And then we're in the world again. So listen very carefully. Being a sannyasi. Being a renunciate, living a simple life does make things a bit simpler. But our karma may impel us in a different direction. Into family, into work. into all sorts of other things. And what Vidranya is saying is, ride the horse in the direction it's going. There's nothing to be gained by trying to have a different kind of Yavahara transactions in the world. You will no. And when we're riding the horse in the direction it's going, we're aligned with our swadharma. It brings peace. And there's a fundamental ease in our lives. If antithetically we're struggling to attain some kind of false purity, that can be very burdensome to me. Any thoughts on this? Next verse. Nani chanto na chantha. 
परादाक्षिण्य संयुता सुख दुखे भजंती परेच्छा पूर्व कर्म ही When a man is neither willing nor unwilling to do a thing, but does it for the feelings of others and, ex- and experiences pleasure and pain, it is the result of fructifying karma through the desire of others. Yes. So, for the person of steady wisdom, the vast majority of his actions come out of his generosity. is response to the desires of other people. Next verse. Katham tarhi kimichantye Katham tarhi kimichanti निषेध Doubt. Does it not contradict the does it not contradict the text at the beginning of this chapter, which describes the enlightened man as desireless? Reply: The text does not mean that desires are absent in the enlightened man. But, the, but that desires arising in him spontaneously without his will produce no pleasure or pain in him, just as the roasted grain has no potency. Yes. So, it's like a thimble full of water added to the ocean. He doesn't have serious rejoicing. when a pleasurable experience happens, nor does he seriously grieve if something unpleasant happens. I mean, I'll give you a very real example. There's not a soul in my living room tonight. The entire class is online. This was not my desire. Prarabdha. We were cruising along with classes here in my living room and all of a sudden COVID happens. I was perfectly content to not teach. And then my students said, do it on Zoom. Not sure I want to do Zoom. I'm, I'm not very technical. We'll do it for you. They get me the iPad, they set it all up. And now we do largely Zoom classes. I'm very happy to do it. But my idea. Other times, an idea will arise in mind. I'm thinking, oh God, I've taught the same text over and over again for so damn many years. I'd like something new. People suggest a book, Panchadashi. Never done Panchadashi. Let's do that one. All right. So it doesn't mean we don't enjoy, doesn't mean a desire, doesn't arise in the bosom. But we've given up the notion 
but a change in people, places, things, and conditions is what I need. But there's a quality of insistence. I must have this either to be happy or to be okay. That's the point that the bigger I'm is driving. Any thoughts on this? And if you'll notice, with very few exceptions, I don't tell my students, you should do this or you shouldn't do that, except discriminate between the real and the unreal. I give you the principles of yoga to do. But in terms of your prarabdha, it's karma. You're going to do what you're going to do. Any thoughts on this? Next verse. Bharjitani to be jani. Santya karya karani cha. Vidavadicha. Vidpadicha. Tatheshtavya. Sattva bodhana karya krit. Roasted grain, though looking the same, cannot germinate. Similarly, the desires of the knower. Well aware of the real unreality of objects of desire cannot produce merit and demerit. Yes. So we have these uh, images like um, roasted seeds. The other one that's frequently used is a length of rope that is burnt. It's charcoal. It looks like a rope, but it can't bind us. The roasted seeds cannot sprout. So the point is, a desire that arises in the bosom, is it the fruit of spiritual ignorance? Meaning, has the veil of ignorance of Arana Shakti come down? And the big shape of Shakti, I feel like I'm a person and I need stuff. And I got to struggle to get that. I got to dominate the world, control other people, acquire stuff. If that's the fruit of ignorance, then it's going to be problematic. But if you know who you are and that desire arises simply as the force of the past, I'm going to go to the symphony on Thursday. Do I need to go to the symphony? No. They cancel the, the concert. It's no big deal. Will I enjoy it? Hope so. Is it the answer to all the problems of the existence? Oh, I just got to go hear the music. Not particularly. And you will find the more you're in this work, the more the mind is soaked in knowledge. Various karmas will wear out. They no longer, it's just a non-issue in my life. It's not there anymore.
Next verse. Dagdhapi jamaro hepi bhakshana yo payujyate vidvadichapyalabho vidyadichapyalpabhogam kuryanabhyasanam bahu. Though it does not germinate, the roasted grain can be used as food. In the same way, the desires of the knower yield him only a little experience, but cannot lead to varieties of enjoyment producing sorrow or abiding habits. Yes. Oh, what a lovely image. So the uh, mung beans may not sprout, but I can saute them and put uh, sauce on them and they make a lovely meal. So also, the fructifying karmas can bring us some enjoyment. But they leave no lasting impression. It comes to mind when I met Swamiji, he took snuff. It was really gross. And uh, in most of the videographers would turn away from it when he was stuffing this stuff up his nose. But then I'm not sure why at some point, the last four or five years of his life, he just quit doing stuff. The doc probably told him he had to stop. Not a big deal. Preference, not insistence. I think that's the best way to articulate. Next verse. Jim, what's the difference between, say, conviction and insistence? I don't know. What do you mean by conviction? You know, like there are some people who, um, I don't know, may have strong convictions on, um, for example, Krishna, right, had strong convictions on dharma versus or dharma. Like this is, uh, the Pandavas are on the side of dharma and the Kauravas are not. And well, so I'm going to push back on that. I think they were idiots to lose a kingdom on a dice game. <laughs> you know, let's go to the heart of it. They were idiots. Can you imagine President Biden giving away Alaska on a dice game? Well, they had to then do the karma of it, do the best they could. But no, they didn't always do the right or the smartest thing, in my opinion. And we may have convictions, but preference, not insistence. Let me tell you something like out of my own life. So when I was in... Jaipur in 2015, hanging with uh, Bhuvaneshwarananda. He had suggested one of these Western devotees read the Gita, and he recommended the Iskan Gita. My first thought was, why in God's name would he recommend that one? It's so dualistic. There's so much judgment in it. But then the next thought is, Swamiji's Gita is illusory. Prabhupada's Gita is illusory. Vyasa's Gita is just illusion. It's all my...
Did I have a conviction? Yeah. But could I drop it? Yeah. Today in our contemporary political situation, do I have convictions that I think a certain political party has more righteous ideas? You better believe it. But if the other dude wins, God, I'm done. Not worth losing your serenity over. Is that useful? Yeah. I'm just trying to um, see. Yeah, I, I think that's that's how I've thought about it. But I wonder, like, is it, for example, let's say there's, if you have strong conviction about universal principles, like say something like, you know, peace or love or whatever, does people seem to be able to endure a whole lot and maybe because it's universal, they're still able to have conviction and not be unbalanced. I don't know if I'm making any sense. Well, you know, like I, I am a, a peacenik. I happen to believe in Gandhi's solution to conflict nonviolent resistance to injustice. But the world doesn't seem to work that way right now. But you know, they didn't ask my opinion. It is the way it is. This is the prarabdha of the world right now. If you have a conviction that that um, working for peace is what you want to do, then throw yourself into it. We have, you know, a, a handful of students in the Sangha who are deeply committed to non-animal products and people's diets, to a vegan lifestyle. You know, I would never tell them to give that up. But what was the what was the T-shirt I saw online this morning? Um, it was. I believe in slow. It was, it was like, I want to slaughter the people who slaughter animals. That's basically what the t-shirt was saying. And I'm going, oh, you know, dude, you don't understand karma. Convictions are just ideas that are firmly held. All ideas without exception are unreal. The yogi will find peace if he fundamentally remembers that. So that's how I would sum it up. Is that useful? Yeah. All right. This is a good place to stop. Then. What verse are we on for next week? Uh, my finger just slipped out. Let me see. Okay. Mark, do you know? It's, I think we are... I think on... it's 167. Oh, 167, yeah. 167. All right. Om Pur Namada Pur Namidam Pur Nad Pur Namudachate Pur Nasya Pur Namadaya Pur Nameva Vashishyate Oh, Shanti, 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 Hari Om Sri Guru Pyo Namaha, Hari Om.